Welcome to our Ratwell City meeting for August 2019. Council is keen to engage with members of the community and now live streams the formal council meetings to make them accessible. The stream will be available to view on Ararat Rural City Council's Facebook page from 6pm and on Council's website www.ararat.vic.gov.au from Wednesday morning following the Council meeting. You do not require a Facebook account to watch the live broadcast. Simply enter www.facebook.com backslash Ararat Rural City Council into your address bar. Please be understanding. Traditional knowledge and council break. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Almighty God, we humbly ask that you help us as elected councillors of the Ararat Rural City Council, guide our deliberations, prosper what is your will for us, to your honour and glory and to the welfare and benefit of the people whom we serve in the Ararat Rural City. Councillors, please, Councillor. Councillor Pledge. We will undertake the duties of the office of councillor in the best interest of the people of the municipal district of the area of the city council and faithfully and impartially carry out the functions, powers, authorities and discretions vested in us under the local government act 1989 or any act to the best of our skills and judgment. Thank you, Peter. There are no apologies. Confirmation of the minutes of the meeting held on the 16th of July 2019. We move that, Councillor Armstrong, Councillor George, who will wish to speak to the minutes. If not, I'll put them all those in favour. Again, that's passed. Are there any declaration or disclosure of interest? Yes, sir. No. Okay. Is there any admission of urgent business? No. No request to address council, Mr. Sullivan? No. No one in the gallery? No deputations or presentations? There are no petitions? Reports requiring council direction 3.1. Um, under section 981 of the local government, and council can delegate mem to members of council staff uh, the powers, duties, and functions set out in the instrument. Um, all delegations have recently been uh, re reviewed on a regular basis and they've recently been reviewed. The current review includes several minor changes to staff and includes legislation changes to the provisions under section 185 of the Local Government Act and section 61 2A of the Planning and Environment Act 1987. The delegation schedule is included <coughs> in the um, to this report. Are there any questions for the officer? If there are no questions, anyone would willing to move the recommendation? Councillor Braithwaite. Councillor Armstrong, do you wish to speak, Councillor Braithwaite? No. Anyone wish to speak? We will put the motion, all those in favour. Against, that's passed. Uh, 3.2, thank you again. Thank you, Sir. As with the previous report, um, the delegations, these are appointments and authorisations, and again are reviewed on a regular basis. Um, the one that's um, presented tonight is the only changes to this appointment is the several minor changes to staffing and the schedule is also included for council's information. Are there any questions of the officer? If not, anyone willing to move the recommendation? Certainly. Councillor uh, Allgood, anyone second? Councillor Dodge, do you wish to speak, Councillor? Anyone wish to speak? If not, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Against, that's passed. 3.3. A review of the councillor's support and reimbursement um, expenses policy has recently been undertaken. Uh, the, review, the review took into account the recommendations from the um, Victorian Auditor General's Fraud and Corruption Control uh, Report into Local Government, which was released in June 2019. Along with the review of the policy, the Associated Council forms were also reviewed and uh, both now include changes as recommended in the Vargo report. Uh, some changes to the policy and forms, and forms include that uh, the professional membership and subscription section is deleted, um, ensuring that appropriate receipts and tax invoices are included with all claims, uh, inclusion of vehicle details, odometer readings, and explanation of the purpose of business has also been included. 
and all claims to include details of benefits to the community and a signed confirmation by councillors. Uh, councillors' expenses are uploaded on the council website once every, every month. Are there any questions for the officer? Any comments? <coughs> any the recommendation? Councillor <coughs> Alban, do you wish to speak, Councillor Hall? I Only just, just to say, Mr. Mayor, it's common sense, I think. Yeah. I'll just make a comment that it's uh, <coughs> it's quite now quite clear in the, in the past there was a bit of ambiguity, uh, and particularly if we uh, adopt the Auditor General's recommendations uh, when they come out, uh, we're doing what they tell us to do. Also, can I just add, there is no indication that anything's gone wrong in the past or recently. It's just a complete and utter update. So if no one else wishes to speak, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Against that's passed. 3.4 quarterly performance, that would be yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is really a prelude to our final organisation of annual accounts as well. So this is our final quarterly report for the year. I suppose the highlights of that are if we Turn to um, the uh, comprehensive income statement. There's some good news there for us, I think. It's fair to say that uh, we were projecting a comprehensive um, result of a deficit of $2.72 million. And our, our actual result is a surplus of $3.99 million. So that's a fairly good turnaround during the period of that, uh, 12 months. Some of that is in relation, has been due to increases in uh, grant revenue during that period, savings made through staffing restructure changes, and also some changes we made around freezing expenditure around a whole range of carry forward items for the 2017-2018 budget. So that's that's where we've ended up there. The, the really good news in that is we've had a cash surplus of $2.74 million for the year, which we're able to um, put into reserve for a whole range of purposes, which I'll talk about in a moment. But the other, the other good result is we've had a $1.027 million increase in our projected capital works program for the period too. So that all counts against our asset renewal program, which is all, um, all good news during that period. Um, from that uh, cash surplus, we're able to fund a range of, um, we're able to put in reserve opportunity range a range of other initiatives that we spoke about last week, and that is the domestic wastewater plan, um, some more work around the fitness centre development, electric car charging points, gravel road bell mounts, tree works, we've got an ageing tree population as you know that we need to do some additional work on, uh, some depot improvements, some structural works to our urban buildings, uh, defibrillator maintenance, uh, cold extensions, uh, some work around the Arak co-working space, some additional expenditure there, uh, Bendigo Bank and ARC, uh, Australian, uh, sorry, Arrow Royal City Council projects, um, some work around our retail strategy, retail, retail, retail facade grants, digital transformation of the organisation, some provision around uh, funding our contribution towards our regional mountain bike track and also the Arrow's development zone, and some work around more broadly some uh, infrastructure upgrades. So I think that we're able to utilise that cash in cash um, surplus in meaningful ways for the community in that space. Any questions, Councillor Yeah, Mr. CEO, the um, that's a, a very good result, but the additional uh, projects that you've just outlined, two point six odd million. Yes. Um, that's a significant change to our budget. It is. Yes. It will need to be reported to the minister. It will be. Yes. Yeah, we'll report that. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, someone willing to move the recommendations to Councillor Blackwell, Councillor Hull? Mm -hmm. Speak to it? No. Anyone wish to speak to it? Yes, please. Mr. Hull? I think that um, this is a very significant report. I think that um, this is based on a budget which was actually developed by the uh, previous interim CEO and the council together, and that um, our new CEO took over uh, later last year. And I think the result is absolutely amazing. I think it's a great endorsement of the work that he and the staff have done. Um, if you think that there was a surplus of 3.99 million against a budget of deficit of 2.72 million, 
That's a turnaround of 6.719 million in the budget. And in anybody's book, that's a very significant turnaround. So I think that we should congratulate the CEO and his staff for the work that he's done in implementing the strategic plan at our council. Um, we were finding ways to cut expenditure and the additional things that we've been able to put into the community are fantastic. Uh, one of the things that he did was to reduce um, employee costs uh, by about 448,000. Um, is sometimes accompanied by pain, but um, he's still managing to work with a very good workforce. We've put a lot of um, work into the community. There is um, um, 11.633 million was spent on infrastructure, including roads, bridges, and buildings. All of this work is community wide. The uh, extra expenditure allowed by the reduction in um, or the surplus is spread right across the community and I think that's a fantastic outcome. This is a very small snapshot that I've just um, uh, put forward but I think it's a very satisfactory end of year result and I'd like to congratulate everybody in the council, the CEO and staff. Yes, Mr Mayor, I do. Um, Mr Mayor, I'd just like to uh, address the Council on the issue of being reported so often and getting into all the strife that Councillor Petman, Councillor Board, Councillor McQueen and myself got. We tried to pull this back going back about three years ago and we got absolutely bashed up. And I feel very proud of the fact that we've been proved right, that things weren't right within this organisation. It took a lot of heartache and a lot of desperation. I'm feeling a bit nervous now, to actually stand here and say that things weren't right. But we had the courage to do that and now we can witness this turnaround. And I'd like to congratulate the new uh, CEO for the work and effort that he's gone to. But we proved that what we were doing was right and all of the bashing up that we got was absolutely wrong. And I stand by that. Well, that's Mr Smith. Yes, I do. <coughs> and I um, hope that the state government takes note of this and reads the power of the Commission on Fire Report again when they can see that I was wrong. As the uh, two councillors have mentioned, the uh, Commission of Inquiry and the past, my point of view is, of course, that this has very little to do with that. That was all about the rate of the structure and changing the rates. It never at any stage went to the infrastructure uh, position that we're now in. And I'll just leave it that. It wasn't. Well, we're wrong. We're, we're wrong. We're wrong. Well, yeah. history is yeah. sharp and wrong. Can, can I just add that uh, I support Councillor Howard's comments and make this other comment. The amount of money that we've saved and is in surplus is not a win for the game. It's being used because when you just look at the figures, it's surpluses. Address key areas of community concern. It's not been used for flights of families. And I think those two key things are very important as well. Councillor Braithwaite, do you wish to come? No, in debate. No. If not, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Against part. <coughs> and uh, 3.5, Mr. CEO. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is an opportunity Council has to, in, to join into a our power purchasing agreement with 45 other councils around Victoria, which looks at purchasing renewable energy for use by council. It uh, will yield savings of between 5 and 25% over a 10 year period that we enter into the PPA for um, to council our current electricity bill. You know, I was pretty shocked when I saw this actually, it's $400,000 per annum. Uh, so if we're looking at four, if we're looking at five to 25% savings on that potentially, that's a pretty good game to council again. Um, and it also provides an opportunity to, to I guess, um, support the, um, the um, renewable energy market, which we're an active player with our wind farm technology and other technologies we're talking about at the moment. So um, I think that's all in the sale, that one, Mr. Mayor. Any questions for the CEO? If not, some are willing to move the recommendation. Councillor Braithwaite and Hull, do you suspect to it? 
Yes, Mr. Um, yes, Mayor. I must admit that I was actually out at the um, wind farm when they, the uh, people from Melbourne actually came up, the City of Melbourne and another other, a number of other consortiums in Melbourne came up and they were talking so proudly about the fact that they purchased renewable energy and I guess I went out there and I didn't know a lot about what was going on because ARAC wasn't included and it was out of our boundary. But while we were out there, uh, I was interviewed and there was a great excitement with the fact that Melbourne had finally recognised the fact that renewable energy was the way to go and it was great to actually be part of that absolute celebration. And when you drive around now and you see all these towers and the fact that ARAC's been one of the leading lights, I guess, on renewable energy over the years, and I think we should be very proud of that. We still do have our energy park out the road that is basically something that we've got up our sleeve, but uh, renewable energy has always been at the heart of our rat and I'm very proud of the fact that we're one of the leading lights in it. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for Council Yeah, I'm very happy that this report's been presented to us. It was a, um, a campaign of mine back in the day that <laughs> tried to uh, uh, achieve this and uh, and I endorse what Councillor Walgood said is that the community of Ararat and the Council of Ararat have always been extremely proactive in this area and I'm glad to see this occurring. Thank you. All those in favour? Oh, I didn't get this. Oh, well, I'll change it around <coughs> and you move the motion then second. I just said Councillor Rayfriend, sorry. Yep. Uh, no, I just want to say that this is a win-win situation because not only are we are supporting renewable energy, which is important in this era of looking at climate change, but also it, it's going to lead to a decrease in cost to the council and anything that costs us less in um, our facilities means that we have more money to put back into the community. So I think it's a great result. Right. It I'll will be. I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Against pass. Item 3.6 counts, this is the uh, document that was handed to you uh, for the meeting, and uh, for me. 3.6 Whitcliffe Action Group, Whitcliffe Common, Section 86 Committee. Thank you, Mr. Uh, the Whitcliffe Action Group, Whitcliffe Common, have been a Section 86 Committee since 2006. The original service level agreement gave the committee the responsibility of inspecting the planning and mowing of the Whitcliffe Common, which was just located at 39 Walker Street, Whitcliffe. With changes to the committee over a period of time, it's been identified that the original service levels have changed. The Wycliffe Action Group have advised that they would like to re-establish their committee as a community group, the Wycliffe area and just uh, Wycliffe and the district. It's considered appropriate for the Wycliffe Action Group to continue as an independent committee and that the Wycliffe Action Group, Wycliffe Common, Section 86 committee status be dissolved and council officers will work with the Action Group. Any questions for you, sir? Um, passing the um, management to this committee, um, it is still council land. Is there any risk management that needs to be dealt with as a result by the council? Well, the contract will, will, will be changed to the cleaning contract. Will yeah, the, the only risk, sorry if I may, <laughs> but the only risk that council really faced around this was the fact that they, that the common committee were actually engaging a cleaner to clean public toilets there. It'll become part of our cleaning contract at that point in time and free the common committee up to become an action group that we with community as opposed to having a job to do on council's behalf. I think it just really mitigates the risk issues involved there. Thank you. Just one more question. Um, Will they still be available to apply for council grants? <coughs> when they become incorporated. Yeah. Well, when they become incorporated in organisations, they'll, 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 they'll be free out to do that. Because <coughs> so. I have been out there and shared their meetings, and I must admit that the first meeting I went to, there was about 35 people there. So they're very, very strong out there, and I just wondered if that would make a difference in case anything changed. <coughs> Well, I'll just make a comment later in my view of it. This will actually strengthen the community group instead of being just restricted to the, uh, the common. We'll now be able to look after the whole of <coughs> The people I've spoken to out there are very supportive of this. As long as council still supports them, and under this council, I can't see that not happening. 
So anyone else which ask the officers any questions? If not, I'm going to move on. Sorry, if I may just just for a moment. The, the Wycliffe group are actually very, they're, they're quite happy with this approach. We've, we've yeah. negotiated this with them, it's not something we're imposing, it's a suggestion we made that they've taken up fully. So there's no sense of this being imposed on them in any way. It's a conversation that's been conducted with them very clearly and very professionally. So I don't think there's a problem around that development. Councillor yeah. Hull. Councillor Armstrong, would you wish to speak to the Councillor? Um, I think it's an excellent example of us giving the community more control over their um, facilities and what they do in their community. And so I think it's an excellent idea. Anyone else wish to speak? I spoke out of order before, so I think you have my job. If not, I'll put the motion all those in favour. Against, that's passed. Uh, <coughs> section 4. 4.1 building improvements. There's a number of approvals here. Can I just ask um, the question that down on permit number 2019129 straight 2, that should be around the other way, shouldn't it? Uh, which one's that? The approvals by our one? Yeah, Vincent Street. Yeah, that was pretty quick work if we completed three days before we started. Yep. Just a I think it probably should be around the other way. Even the other way around, it's pretty good. Even if we receive before, we receive afterwards. Oh, that's a private. No, so, yeah. no it is actually right. Yeah, yeah it is correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because that was from a private surveyor. So they approved it on the 24th and 6th, and it was received by us on the 27th. Oh, that's all right. That yeah. makes more sense. Even so, that's not a bad turnaround by then. Uh, any other questions? If not, there's a recommendation. Mr. Deutsch, are you moving the recommendation? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the whole. Anyone wish to speak to recommendation? <laughs> if not, I'll put it all those in favour. Uh, 4.2 planning matters approved. Any questions of the officers? Do see anyone willing to move the recommendation? Councillor Armstrong and Councillor Holt. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Armstrong? No. Anyone wish to speak? If not, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Against the uh, 4.3, Local Government Performance Reporting Framework. Update. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just very briefly, this is just for information purposes of Council. We're required each year to report on the Local Government Performance Reporting Framework to uh, local government of Victoria. This covers a whole range of indicators across council's areas of service performance. Um, I guess the undertaking I've made to council is we're going to report very openly to community about performance in those areas. We'll have a whole suite of other performance indicators we'll develop over time as well. But these, perform, these form the backbone because they're the ones we're required to report on to the, um, to the department around the Know Your Council website. So what we've done this year is we've, um, we've actually taken the process very seriously. We have, for the, I think we're very comfortable with the fact the numbers we provide this year are totally accurate to the system. And we've also provided um, quite lengthy at times responses or I guess commentary about the, about the KPIs as they've been reported. Because in the past, a critique has made a number of councils, including our own, is that we've made very um, poor responses to that commentary that isn't very informative when the community go on and want to see the Know Your Council website and understand what's happening. Things, very simple phrases from um, the accountants play that don't really work there. We need to use comprehensive language that people understand to explain what the indicators are. We're very frank about areas where we need to improve our performance and uh, we've, we've actually improved in a range of areas this year as well. So that was just for council information on that one, Mr. Mayor. Um, just on the health inspections, um, that's, and it, it may not be related to it, but I'm sure that the CEO will let me know. There's been an issue at the moment about the measurements on different, um, well, what, what would I probably call them servings as you get in hotels and things. And I remember years ago, we used to go around and we used to check all the measurements and things. Council Bill probably remembers those days. And I'm just wondering if there's any thought about bringing that back. Our health inspector used to go around and, and do very strong... I have to, I have to take that on notice. I'm not sure how weights and measures is managed anymore. I'm, 
You've been diddled on your seven ounce beers at the hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cancer all. <laughs> I was listening to the petrol conversation and, and those sort of things, and they're saying that we're not getting what we're paying for anymore. Yeah. And I'll, it just brought back that fact that, you know, we used to receive those reports and we were very tight on the fact that, you know, we kept everybody yes. on track. But it seems to have disappeared. Can I make a report that one in the next brief? Yeah. Just well, I'll get some information for you on how that works. Yeah. 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 But it was um, very strong. It's important because back in the 16th century in France, <laughs> when they when they made bread, yes. uh, if the baker short uh, short served the dozen, um, they could actually be be um, severely dealt with. In fact, that's where the term baker's dozen that's comes right. from because. They'd give you a dozen rolls and they'd throw one more in just to make sure that the weight of bread that you're getting was, was more, not less, because these guys were dealt with fairly severely. Yeah. That's about as severely as you could dealt with. Yeah, dead. Yeah. 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 You'll be killed for sure. Well, we've bread. taken that request on notice, yeah. which we will. <laughs> Up to <laughs> uh, Did I actually move for. Uh, no one has. There's a mover and seconders. The recommendation. Bill, go Gwenda. Do you speak to it? No. You've already done that, haven't you? Any, anyone else wish to speak to it? If not, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Thank you. Uh, Section 86 committee minutes reports. There's a list of them there. Yeah. No one's got anything to add to it. There's a recommendation. Move the recommendation. Council Alwood, move, second. Councillor Holland, anyone wish to speak to it? Councillor Alwood, no. If not, put the recommendation. All those in favour? It's passed. Advisory committee meetings, minutes. That's only one, which is the one I attended a couple of weeks ago, or last Wednesday. So any questions on that? If not, there's a recommendation. Move, Councillor Alwood, thank you. Councillor Hewitt, second, I saw your fingers move. <laughs> then we wish to speak to it. If not, I'll put the recommendation of those in favour. Uh, Assembly of Councillors. List of them there. Any questions on the assemblies? If not, there's a recommendation. Yeah. Move Councillor Hull, second Councillor Brakeway. Does anyone wish to speak to it? If not, I'll put the recommendation on those in favour. Pass. Councillor's reports. Councillor Dorch. <coughs> right. A week or so ago, I attended the um, community uh, meal in uh, Stratton, which was organised by the uh, Red Cross here from Ararat. It was very well attended, about 130 people there. Met a few people, met a few new friends, and it was quite, quite informative for me, the community is getting together. It's good to see. Thank you. Councillor Peppman? I've got nothing to report. Councillor Orkut? Yes, it's me. Um, I was just wondering if there's any further news on the graffiti problem. Are we doing anything about it, or is there anything we can do about it? Is that a report or a question? It's a question because we talked about it extensively at the last meeting, and I'm just wondering if there's been any. Well, go for your report, and at the end I'll ask the CEO. Have you got other issues you want to deal with? Yes, I have. Right out. Um, I'd also, uh, on the 26th of July, I attended the annual dinner at the Arab Senior Sits, and I mention this because they've had some works done uh, courtesy of the federal government, and the Arab Rural City assisted as well. And the amount of work that was done there by the council and the attitude of the staff, um, they've asked me to report back to this council meeting about how thrilled they are with what went on. I also attended the Arab Rotary Changeover Dinner with you, the new president, Mr Meg. Um, the Arab Police attended the Green Hill Lake meeting just recently and they were seeking permission to hold another mud run. It was very successful last year and they have engaged a lot of youth to actually get involved this year to see what they would like. Pleased to also report that the lake is up to the 1.2 metre mark, still running in from Warriakin Road, and the jetty is actually floating, which the Rotary Club also put in. 
Um, we did have a problem with the gas bottles and the solar panel being removed. The yeah, Arab police are checking that to see what happened. Um, on August the 3rd and the 10th, I attended Geelong and Ballarat to watch some of our local youth play basketball. And just to say that the, some of the local youth are absolutely outstanding with what they're doing. So it's great for, the, for our app and it's great for everyone in town to actually see that happening. On Sunday the 4th, I witnessed my son trying to play football. Um, quite a comical match, but a great fundraiser for the health, uh, Healthy Families function. It was held for this year, so it was a really um, good day and I know that a number of us were all there. And uh, on the 8th of August, I attended the Alexander Hall committee meeting, annual meeting, and once again, they had a lot of thanks for the council for the, uh, the effort of the staff and their assistance in what they do, and also the fact that we've got Wayne Gason as the president now, and Gason's doing an enormous amount of work down there, uh, which is fantastic. On Sunday, I, I attended the Trash and Treasure, which was for the Golden Gateway Festival. And the Arat Ladies Probers Club, I attended that meeting and I was given by Julie a very big pile of council documents to actually take and hand out. They all disappeared. And the ladies were saying how they love to sit there and read what's actually going on. So that was great. So I'll take lots more, more of those if I can. Um, and the Arat Show Society has had incredible report support this year from everybody in town, which is great to know. Now, one of those things I'd like to bring up, Mr Mayor, if I may, is that recently there was a story in the Herald Sun about the football story, about how it was invented by the Aborigines. Well, I have some documents here that actually tell you the true story of the football, and it's got true documents with it, and I don't know what we can do about it, but I feel really offended with the fact that Tom Mills, who was from Ararat, started this whole process off and all of a sudden Melbourne's decided that it started off by another organisation which I won't name here tonight but it's very sad when you think that when Tom Mills decided this whole process the idea was that he played cricket he was an excellent cricketer and what he wanted was he wanted to keep all of his men fit in the winter and what he came up with was what is now known as football and the original um, ideas in the book about all the rules and regulations, half of them are still in vogue, like you've marked the ball, you're not, you're not allowed to be touched and all those sorts of things, a lot of go over the line. But it's an incredible book and I must admit that I was always a soft touch for anything that was local. But that's a really good book and it really does tell the story about Tom Mills and Tom, Tom Mills. Tom Mills. Tom Wills. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Tom, Tom Wills. Wills. Yeah, Wills. sorry. But it, yeah, it's the Moisten boy, yeah, yeah, he is. And it's, as I said, it's the original scripts from the diaries of the, the family. So very proud of that one, but very annoyed with the Herald Sun when they come out with great fanciful stories like footy, history, query, no evidence to AFL's linking of the game's origin to Mong Book. Well, it's Tom Wills and it will always be Tom, uh, Tom Wills and uh, I'll stand by that and the book tells it all. Haven't watched the video, it hasn't even been out of the cover because my daughter took the video player, but I will watch it. But very interesting, but very frustrating when you read stuff like that about it. I'm trying to take something else up there. Thanks, Mr. McKenna. Incidentally, he was also the first person to take a cricket team to England and they were at the shops. He was. He and was. they won. Yeah. <laughs> and they won. And, and they did. All, the is, is all in the book. If you believe what's in the Herald Sun, you are a bit more fooling the way, aren't you? Well, can I like arguing with people? No. no. The Herald Sun is wrong. We know it's that. There's no value in that. Councillor Armstrong. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I'll um, go back to just what this section of the meeting is about, which is actually an overview of meetings attended. And I've attended three meetings in the previous month. One was the Red Cross um, AGM for the Lake Bolac branch, and service awards were given to three long-serving, particularly long-serving members at that meeting. Uh, the Western Highway Action Committee meeting was held in Ballarat on the 9th of August, and um, a couple of main points to bring home from that meeting is the uh, continuing advocacy that council uh, member council uh, council members, I should say, of that committee are doing to lobby for the fixing country roads program funding, which is very important to all rural councils. 
and also uh, the sharing of information <coughs> of local municipality knowledge around heavy vehicle limits on bridges particularly with Vic roads. Um, that meeting provides an important forum to keep that dialogue open between agencies and municipalities. And on the 12th of August, I was uh, part of a meeting with um, yourself, Mr. Mayor, uh, with Torrance University, which was an interesting opportunity. They were essentially exploring what it is that regional students, potential and current students, might be looking for in uh, tertiary educational services. So it was a bit of a fact-finding mission on the part of those visitors to the council. Thank you. That's great for no. Um, as usual, there are lots of things happening in the community that you get involved with, but the only thing that I'll report is that the Mayor and I attended the um, AGM of the supporters, uh, supporters for the support group for the residents of Low Street this afternoon. I uh, saw a very interesting fashion parade. Um, was quite impressed by their, um, their meeting and their report. And it just highlights how much work the small groups, community groups and volunteers do in our community that keeps our community rolling along and it's all silent, it's all in the background. They do a fantastic job. Right, yeah. Well, I started uh, this month on the 27th of the opening of Fantasies at the Gallery. If anyone didn't go to see that, you missed a, a fascinating opening. Now, on the 29th of 7th, um, I attended a forum with staff at Ballarat in relation to uh, emergency management for the ONG, I just can't remember what the acronym means now, but the State Government Department and the MOV. Then on the 31st of July, I went to the MOV Local Government Bill Reform Meeting where two council representatives could attend and the Minister addressed us on the issues as he saw for his uh, reform of the Local Government Act. And then I had the, in the afternoon the ministerial meeting. Uh, on the 1st of August, I had the Willow Hall meeting, at the annual meeting on the 2nd of August with the Arctour Library, which is always a fascinating group they are. On the 7th of August, the Emergency Management Committee here. And it's like many things. When fire season hasn't isn't on us, people sort of drop off the meetings. When fire season's approaching, they'll start coming again. So yeah. it'll be interesting. Eighth uh, of August, uh, Elmhurst Hall Committee. I also attended Torrance University. On Sunday, I had the privilege to, with the Mayor of Pyrenees, unveil the Vietnam Veterans Memorial at Beaufort. It was the coldest. Sunday morning, I've had for a long time, I think, and I had my suit on and a jacket over the top. I also uh, went to the East Grampians Health Service Resident Support Group, Low Street, uh, it's the uh, longest title I've ever seen. <laughs> but I, I'll just make a comment on that group. I think you don't realise how big an organisation the health service is. You know, they, they throw around figures of 200 so and then you go in there and see how many people there are and how they're fully dependent or partially dependent on the staff. They are big employers and they're uh, a really compassionate group, as are the group that uh, had their annual meeting. And I must declare it a certain conflict of interest because they work very well with the Rotary Club and catering, so we do very well. I also attended other meetings, but I was wearing different hats at the time, and I'll leave them where they are. Thank you. There's no notice of motions. No. Uh, there's no urgent business. And, uh, we're now going to go into confidential for a short time, just now, and it's to deal with tenders and contractual matters. Uh, the open meeting will now be closed by, but members of the public are welcome to rejoin the council meeting following the recommencement of this meeting. Is there a recommendation there to close the meeting? Is anyone here? Councillor Brakeway, Councillor Hull, those in favour? Things passed.